Hello, excuse me. I have to film my perfume video. I know you're so tired, but can you please move out the way so that we can get into this perfume? Maybe? Sort of? No? Okay. Hello, perfume lovers, and welcome to my perfume collection video. These are some of my favorite videos to watch here on YouTube. So I thought I would go ahead and make one of my very own. Before I get into these fragrances though, I'm just showing you how I store mine. These are just in a bookcase here in my bedroom. There are glass doors, but my blinds are usually closed and the lights are, are off. I just have them open and on just for the purposes of this video so that you can see the fragrances a little bit better. Um, I do have over a hundred full-size bottles in my collection that I'm going to go over with you today. So for that reason, I won't be able to go into grave detail and list each note because we would just be here forever. I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis of what these smell like to me and maybe some little tidbits of information that I feel like you need to know. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, on this top shelf, I have one perfume house, and that house is a dozen roses. These, um, when they first came out, they normally retailed for about $125 at Nordstrom or Neiman Marcus, but these have been showing up at my local TJ Maxx and Marshalls, guys, for $9.99 plus tax. These are some substantial bottles. Very heavy, very nicely made. They're 3.4 ounces. They're all Eau de Parfums. I believe that there were six in the collection. I was only able to find four. This first one being Shakespeare in Love, which just does not work for me. It does something very strange on my body chemistry. I just don't like it at all. Moving on. Next, we have Amber Queen. That's what the back looks like. So, so cute. You would think it would be heavy on the amber, but it's quite the opposite. It's actually very light. Doesn't last very long, but it's a nice scent, and I do wear it. Next, we have Angel Face. Beautiful packaging. Um, this one has notes of iris in it. It's just beautiful, and I'm quite impressed with the lasting power of this one. It's really nice. I like it. The last one, and my favorite one, is Iced White. That's what the back looks like. This one right here, guys, it's floral, and it smells just like Gucci Flora. So if you have that, if you smell that, you can't go wrong with Iced White. Pick that one up, give it a try. Moving on down, in this corner here, I have my Guerlain fragrances. These lined up on the side right here are all um, Shalimar flankers. This is the Parfum Initial version. That's Parfum Initial, the original back there. This one is Parfum Initial Lou. The very front, the very front here is Parfum Initial Lou Sensuelle. Let's just stop right quick and take a look at this bottle. Uh, pink juice, frosted bottle. Look at the pink feathers on the side. This is just right up my alley. I just love, love, love this bottle. Pink is my favorite color, so needless to say I'm all over this packaging. I do have backups of this one and this one. Right here in the very front, we have Prada Lou Ambry. Very nice one, I have a backup of that one. In the very back back here, we have Samsara Eau de Parfum, which is my mother's signature scent. I just love that perfume. Right here is another girl on. This is Aqua Allegoria Flora Nymphia. It's a nice, soft, floral scent. Um, but just look at the packaging, love that gold. Guerlain does some of the best packaging in the game and I just love them for that. In the front, we have a Dior. This is Midnight Poison. This has also been discontinued. This one is very heavy on the patchouli, um, so it can tend to smell just a tad cologne on some body chemistries, but on mine, it just works out perfectly. This is great for nighttime. Moving on to my Versace scents. In the front, I have Bright Crystal. Behind that is Crystal Noir, one of my very, very favorites. Love this one at nighttime. It has coconut in it, but it's coconut done well. Really, really like this one. Back here, we have Yellow Diamond, which in my opinion is best for spring and summer since it's so floral. Love that one. Back here is my final and least favorite of the Versace's, and that's Versace Versus. Uh, it's just not grand, guys. Nothing to write home about. Um, I won't be repurchasing that one, unfortunately. Moving right along to the House of Dolce & Gabbana. In the very front, we have the one, which is a lovely vanilla scent. 
the one rose, which I think is discontinued. It's also a great scent. Right here, we have the one desire, which has notes of caramel in it. So it's very sweet, but it's also very seductive. It's something about this one. I just love it. My most recent is Dolce by Dolce & Gabbana. This is a um, heavy floral scent with just a tad bit of freshness to me. Um, I just love it. It lasts a very long time and the packaging is so, so cute. Then we have Dolce & Gabbana's Anthology line. I only picked up two. Number 10 is La Rue de Fortune. I don't know guys, I don't speak French, but this is, it smells to me like a watered down version of Theron Mugler's Angel. Not long lasting, but it's, it's a good scent nonetheless. Next we have number 18, La Lune, which of the two, this one is my favorite. It's just very, very different. It smells like nothing else I have in my collection and I quite like it. If I run out, I would buy another bottle of that one. Moving on, we have the Dolce & Gabbana here with the red cap. This one has been discontinued, but it is one of my favorites. I just love it. I have a backup bottle of it. It's very aldehydic, very classy scent. It's gonna smell like um, the likes of Chanel Number no. 5, you know, in that same family. They don't smell alike, but they're similar. So if you like Chanel Number no. 5 and you can find this, I suggest you give it a smell if you haven't already. Now this one was replaced with this one back here. I'll go ahead and pull this out so you can see it. This is an entirely different scent altogether. This is Pour Femme. This is a very sweet, marshmallowy type scent. I have a tester version, but normally there's a red cap on this one as well. It's just a darker red, very pretty scent. However, if given the choice between the two, I would have to go with the original with this red cap. It just smells the best to me. Then I have the intense version of that one. Still, you know, very nice, very marshmallowy, just a little stronger, longer lasting. Then quite possibly my favorite Dolce & Gabbana of all time is light blue. This one is so nostalgic for me. I'm on probably my sixth or seventh bottle of this. I just love it. It's just a um, very citrusy, very fresh, very clean scent. I get compliments on this one all the time. Moving back up here to the front to my two Armani scents. This one is Armani Diamonds. Beautiful bottle. Just look at how the light reflects that. Oh, it's just so luscious. The scent is very fruity. I get notes of uh, strawberry, maybe raspberry in this one. I like it. Then we have Aqua de Joya by Armani. This is a 3.4 ounce Eau de Parfum. Um, this is a quite a cologne smelling perfume. It has notes of mint in it. I actually don't mind the cologne smell though. It works out really well in my um, body chemistry. I like this one. Moving on to the house of Gucci. Uh, yeah, Gucci. <laughs> in the very front, I have Gucci Flora. And as the name suggests, it's a very floral scent. Behind that, I have Gucci Guilty. This is the one with the purple juice. So this is the intense version. Um, love, 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 love anything Gucci Guilty. I just love that. In the back, back there, I have the original one. Right here is a vintage. This has long been dis discontinued. Um, this is Gucci number no. three in a dabber bottle. This is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. It's an 80s perfume, so it's quite strong. Um, some might even say mature smelling, but I like it. Back here, we have Gucci Envy Me 2. Um, this is a very nice scent as well. I believe that this one is discontinued. Um, I scored this at Perfume Mania, guys, for $10 for a 1.7 ounce, so I bought two backups. This scent right here is just really clean and really green. So if you can think of, you know, like freshly cut grass or when everything is starting to grow back at the beginning of spring, that's what this smells like. It just It's just a very green perfume, and it's very nice. Moving on to the corner here. In the front, I have Chance. By Chanel. This is the Eau Tendre. This is the pink one with the pink juice. This perfume is just the epitome of the word pretty. I just love it. Next we have Allure. This is the Eau de Toilette in a 1.7 ounce bottle. Very nice. Back here is the infamous Coco Mademoiselle. This is a tester bottle. Love that one. This one is Coco Eau de Parfum, quite possibly my favorite um, from the house of Chanel thus far. This is just a beautiful, graceful, sophisticated scent. It lasts all day on me. Just a little goes a long way. If you haven't tried that, try it. It's not going to be for everybody. It is an 80s perfume, so it's quite strong. In the back, back here in a big five ounce bottle, I have Chanel number no. five, Eau Tendre. 
Um, this is just a lighter, younger take on the original. There's less aldehydes in it. So it's just a little bit more crisp smelling. I just love it. I have a backup bottle and a five ounce bottle in the five ounce. I have a backup also of this cocoa as well as this one. And then the Gucci Guilty, I have a backup of that one as well. Let me just scan this row again, make sure I didn't miss anything and I don't think that I have. And we're gonna move on down. Right here is all of my Bagari scents. Right here is Mon Jasmine Noir, love that one. This is the original Jasmine Noir. This is the Eau de Parfum and this is just beautiful. Quite possibly my favorite scent from the House of Bagari. I just love that one. This is Vol de Jasmine. And this one back here is Rose Essential. This blue one back here is BLV. And basically guys, this just smells like a luxurious baby powder. Um, if you like baby powder, try it. I don't mind it. In the front, I have Ralph Lauren's Hot. This is our page by Lanvin. Um, this is the Eclat version. Very clean, crisp, crisp smelling. It reminds me of um, Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue. Then I have Vera Wang Princess. Um, Lolita Lampica. This is a, a very sweet scent, but it has no, uh, notes of licorice in it and it just develops really well on my skin. Back here, I have Belle the Opium, Hugo Boss XX, Ascada's Desire Me, very sweet scent. It's nice, but it doesn't last at all on my skin. In the front, this is something for my vanilla lovers. This is Chopard's Cashmere. It's very inexpensive, guys, under 20 bucks, but it's just a wonderful vanilla scent. So if you like vanilla and you haven't tried that one, pick it up, it's so inexpensive. You just have no reason not to. Next, we have our page, which is also very aldehydic. Uh, if you like Chanel number no. five, try that one. Behind here, I have Jimmy Choo. This is the Eau de Parfum. I recently got this, guys. Look at how much is gone. I, I just love this perfume. It's sweet and it's just fabulous smelling, lasts all day on me. Behind that, I have Jeanne by Lambin. This was a gift to me from my mother and the packaging is just so luscious. Pink juice, pink lace, you can't go wrong. The scent inside is actually quite light quite fruity. I smell rose in it, although I don't think rose is listed on the notes. Then we have Viva La Juicy by Juicy Couture. Love that one. I'm on my second bottle right here. Just Cavalli by Roberto Cavalli. Um, the packaging is just to die for. So cute and the scent is wonderful as well. It's floral. Right here we have Be Delicious by Donna Karen. Now, hmm, I didn't think that this worked well on my body chemistry, but other people do because I get compliments on this all the time. So I just grew to just fall in love with it. I like it. Moving right along, we have um, the original Juicy Couture. I don't wear this one much anymore. I just keep it around for nostalgic reasons. Behind that is a Roberto Cavalli with a beautiful crown cap. Um, this one is a nice scent as well. It smells very grapey to me. Behind that, I have Givenchy. This is very irresistible. This is just a very seductive, musky rose scent. Fantastic. I love this one at night. Next, we have Givenchy's Angel of Demon Le Secret. I'm on my second bottle of this, and I have a backup. I have a backup of that very irresistible as well. This is a very musky, very floral, um, kind of green scent. It's just so, so good. The only thing is it just doesn't last on my skin, but I love the scent so much that I just don't care. Next, I have the Elixir version of that. Over here, I have Givenchy's Play, and I just, oh, I have a backup bottle of this one. I love this one. And then back here, that's the Intense version. I actually prefer the pink one over that. All right, moving back up here to the front, I have Hugo Boss Deep Red. There's something about this one on my skin. It is just so seductive. I have a 1.7 ounce bottle, but I'm getting the big one. Right here, we have Givenchy's or Givenchy's. It's pronounced both ways. I'm not sure which way is the correct way, but this is um, Dahlia Noir. This is the Eau de Parfum. Guys, this is another luxurious baby powder scent. Um, the scent is nice. It just doesn't go with the name Dahlia Noir, in my opinion. 
Moving over here to the front, we have Agent Provocateur L Agent. This is a very oriental, like incense-y, smoky type scent, but it's really, really good. Um, it doesn't come with a top. This is how their bottles come. Um, it, and it's quite strong, so a little goes a long way. And the same is to be said about these next two. Um, this is Theri Mugler's Angel in the Star Bottle. I'm sure you've seen that one before. Beautiful scent, but it can tend to be overpowering, so just eh, very little. And we have Alien, which this one, uh, uh, it only has three notes in it, but this is just some kind of magical juice. I love it. It lasts for days. Um, just a little bit though. Don't, you can't overdo it with that one. Alrighty. So that's that row. I don't think that I missed anything. Moving on down. Get on down, get on down the road to the next row. Okay, so this row is going to have some of my celebrity scents, my Victoria's Secret scents, mixed in with a couple of more expensive scents. Let's just start here. This is Sexual Femme by Michael Germain. Picked this one up for about 10 bucks at Ross. This one actually surprised me. It's quite nice, very gourmand smelling. I smell chocolate in this. Very nice scent. Next, we have Silkway by Ted Lapidus. If you like Barbara Bowie's Le Perfume, Oh, this is a dupe for it. It's very balmy, quite a different scent, so it's not going to be for everybody. But if you like that Barbara Bowie scent, get you some Silkway because it's under $20. Behind that, I have Pure DKNY with a pink top. This one, ew, it's a rose scent, but it just does, it's something about it. It doesn't work well with my body chemistry at all. Um, the dry down is okay, but that initial smell, it just is kind of sour and kind of ugh. All right. Next, we have Daisy by Marc Jacobs. This is a big bottle and the also fresh version. Version, Absolutely love that. So girly, so pretty, so bubbly. Right here, my very first celebrity scent that I'm going to talk about is Lovely by Sarah Jessica Parker. This is a very musky scent. It's nice. Then we have Mont Blanc um, Legend, I think, but this is the Poor, poor Femme version. This is very um, musky, uh, floral, and um, just a little bit of woods in it. Scored this one for about $15 at Ross. Behind here, I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out. This is for my Coco Chanel mademoiselle lovers sanderling guys this smells just like it it's not as luxurious or as long lasting as mademoiselle but it's the exact same scent and it's under twenty dollars um if you're a chanel lover the mademoiselle you need to pick this up you can get it online for twenty dollars or less i'm on my second bottle Moving back up here to the original Burberry. Love this one, a really nice van vanilla scent. I tend to wear this one in the fall and winter. This one right here is Burberry Brit Rhythm, I believe. This is a one ounce bottle. Um, and look at how much I've used. And I've just recently got this. So I do plan on buying a full size of this. It's a really fresh, very, very nice scent, very clean smelling. This one is my least favorite of the Burberries. Um, this is Burberry Touch. This is very masculine smelling to me. Uh, it's just not my favorite. I have worn it. I do wear it. As you can see, some is missing. But this one is not a repurchase for me. Behind that, in this pretty bottle here, I have Oscar De La Renta's Esprit. Oscar De La Renta's Live and Love. This one is very green. Back here, this is Victoria's Secrets Heavenly. Love that one. Repurchased it several times. Then we have Victoria's Secrets Divine, Victoria's Secrets So In Love. Let's move back up here to the front. In the very front, in this cute little one ounce bottle here, this is the Beat in the Eau de Parfum. This has been discontinued, guys, but I just love this. It's a very, very beautiful scent. It's kind of musky, kind of florally. I plan to buy a big bottle of it. Next, we have Amour Amour by Cacherelle, Cacherelle just a fruity scent. Next, I'm going to go ahead and go with the um, House of Alfred song. Now, this is a very underrated house in my opinion. The, the, he tends to do scents that are very floral and very fresh smelling and they last a long time for the money, guys, um, because they're very inexpensive. These are just a quality perfume. You should try them if you haven't. This is always 
pure beautiful both of these out of the two um i think always is my favorite behind here is jewel and this is just in this really cool bottle beautiful floral scent in the back back here i have two more victoria's secret scents this is love and he love is heavenly quite nice this one is um, new bond street i frankly i just got this one for the packaging because it's just adorable then moving on back up here to the front, I have Yves Saint Laurent's Baby Doll. I had high hopes for this one, but it's just okay. Not a repurchase for me. I'm just not in love with it. Then we have my two favorite celebrity scents of all time, guys. Mariah Carey's Luscious Pink and Jessica Simpson's Fancy Love. I've purchased each of these at least six or seven times. They're just great. I get complimented on them all the time. They're inexpensive. This Fancy Love smells like this Burberry over here. This one is just a little bit um, heavier and this one is lighter. But given the choice between the two, I have to go with Fancy Love. Plus it's cheaper. So it's just like a win win situation in my opinion next we have another victoria's secret and this is forbidden get into this bottle i just love it it reminds me of um versace's packaging with this big clunky top on there i do have a backup of this one it's very sexy smelling but it doesn't last long which tends to be the case with victoria's secret scents back here i have a hugo boss this is orange sunset and oh, I love this one. This one smells like a luxurious orange creamsicle. If you're an orange lover, you, yes, I love this. I have a backup of it. Then back here, I have a Michael Kors Sporty Citrus. That's a big bottle of it. That was a gift from my son from Mother's Day. Then right here, I have Ted Lapidus White Soul. This is a strange one. I like it, but it's not gonna be for everybody. It smells uh, different. Um, let's come back in the front. Right here, I have Chopard's Wish. Look at the packaging. Um, nice. But it has to be, you know, laying on its side. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about purchasing this one. This smells like um, Theron Mugler's Angel again. Just a very watered down version of it. So if Angel is a little bit too overpowering, too suffocating almost, Give this one a try. It's very inexpensive. It's under $20. The caramel in here is just luscious. I love it. This one. This is Wild Bloom Rouge by um, Banana Republic, I think. The scent is just eh, not, eh, you know. It doesn't last very long. It's not that great. Um, it reminds me of some type of body mist. But what I got this for is this packaging. It's just super cute. Look at it. So cute. Behind that... This cost me $5.99 at Marshall's. This is a Jeanne Arthez scent. This is Love Generation Fashion Victim. The packaging is cheesy, cheap looking, but this smells just like Burberry Brit, which I've had and ran out of. So um, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this one. For the price, I like the silage and the scent. And finally, I have Burberry Body in the Eau de Parfum back here in the back, the biggest bottle that it comes in. That's a very musky scent, and I really love that one. All right, I think that's going to wrap up this row. I don't think I've missed anything. And while I'm down here, let me just go ahead and show you where I keep my backups here in this drawer down here. Over here, this one is not as full, but it has some of my husband's backups in there as well. He is very big on fragrances too. Okay guys, so that's going to wrap up this fragrance collection video. If you made it to the very end, I realize it's over 20 minutes. You guys are the real MVP and I really appreciate it. This is my very first YouTube video and I'm recording it on my iPhone. So hopefully the quality wasn't that bad. Guys, I really appreciate you once again. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Toodles.